Hello everybody, my name is Athena and welcome back to my channel Life Through Dyspraxia. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing something that I think I've done before a couple of years ago, but I don't think I've done it recently. And that is looking at the elements of dyspraxia which I struggle with and talking about how I overcome the difficulty and what strategies I use along the way coping with this. Now, I'm not sure whether this video is going to help anyone, make anyone feel comforted if they can relate to me, maybe give a little bit of advice. Either way, even if it's just an enjoyable video to watch, I don't mind. So with that, without further ado, let's get on with the video. Now, the first thing which I'm going to be talking about, because it's very relevant in my mind, just coming from the kitchen, is eating and making food. Now, a lot of the times I make food, I spill it on myself, or when I'm chopping it, I'll end up on the floor, or I don't know how this happened yesterday. I was making food and the splashback of like the bolognese sauce just went all over me, all over my white top. I was thinking to myself, how can I stop doing this? A lot of the times I do have coping mechanisms for it, but a lot of the time I forget. So something that I try to do is I wear my pyjamas a lot of the time when I'm cooking just so I don't get any important clothes. I know a lot of people can't do that if they're in an environment like a school. I also wear clothes that aren't that important to me although I do slip up now and again like yesterday where I just put on a casual top and thought oh I look quite cute today. I like what I'm wearing and then 10 seconds later I haven't even eaten anything and this flashback and I'm thinking Eek. so the next thing that I want to talk about is time management now I think I briefly skimmed over this a couple of videos ago maybe it's a little bit more than that I'm not too sure my time management is a little bit up and down like a roller coaster especially going to lessons now I have to take a bus to go to my lessons it's not like I wouldn't say it's particularly like a normal uni experience. I have to get a 15 minute bus ride to a completely different campus to learn. And a lot of the times I'm either just make it to the bus, just miss the bus, or the bus is extremely late. And this gets very, very irritating, especially when I'm late for my lessons. And sometimes it's my fault, sometimes it isn't my fault. So, but something I've done recently to try and help myself with the time management is really be on top of it and aware of my surroundings, write notes down on when I need to leave, I took a picture of the bus timetable, even tomorrow I've got, uh, I'm meeting a friend, well I'm not meeting a friend, I'm ringing a friend at two o'clock and I've messaged her to try and I've messaged her to ask me to message me when the meeting is and stuff like that. Being okay to ask your peers or your parents or even your family for a little bit of help, even if it's just messaging, messaging you a couple of hours beforehand saying, hey, we, we said we were going to meet up then, remember? And most of the time I end up, I either remember or I slightly forget, but it jogs my memory pretty well. Something else that was a real struggle because of my dyspraxia, I feel, was making friends at uni. And this took me a while to make friends. My first year was very rocky, so I didn't really make that many friends in my first year. And my second year, I slowly started to make friends. It was still a tiny bit rocky, but I started to make friends. And then my third year, I finally made some solid friendships. But it took a lot of it took a lot of trial and error to figure out what I was doing. And I'd say one of the main reasons where dyspraxia plays into this is creating my shyness. Now I know shyness is a symptom of dyspraxia. So it was my shyness as well as me struggling to comprehend information. And that's not just with work, that's digesting. Thing that's digesting conversations that people are saying to me if I'm nervous or anxious sometimes my dyspraxia plays up and I really struggle to comprehend and I don't want to be the person to say 
oh, I didn't understand you. Can you say it again? Can you say it again? Because I can get a little bit irritating. And then sometimes if I do make friends with people, I really struggle to keep up with communication. So I end up losing the friendship. Now, being in my new flat of 10, it was hard at first because I was very anxious going into a new flat. And, uh, but I feel going into this flat, it's really helped me push myself out of my shell. I remember at the beginning, every single time I went into the kitchen, there'd be a brand new person. So I took it in my head as, this is a new slate. You don't have to force yourself to make friends with everybody right now. Just take it slowly, like you're reintroducing yourself each time. And also I'd suggest if you feel comfortable over time, or even do what I did, say it straight away, telling the people, telling your friends, peers, or people you've just met, if they're not strangers and you feel comfortable, about your dyspraxia or about your disability, and giving them a brief outline about what it is so they can understand and look out for your difficulties know that you're trying your best and you may need a few adjustments i found that really helped a lot of the time people come up to me and they just think casual conversation like oh you've got dyspraxia what does that entail and they'll be really curious and a lot of the time also they'll create accommodations without me even noticing a lot of the people in my flat have hidden disabilities as well. So like I feel like I can relate to a lot of them and it's not just me on my own. I can bounce ideas back into. And the last point I'm going to be talking about is trying activities which I know I'm going to be bad at, but still giving it a go because I want to. So for example, skydiving and surfing. Now these were both elements which I thought I'm going to be rubbish at this Athena I know I am I want to do it anyway and just giving it my full go now both of them I got persuaded to do but I did want to do I half wanted to do it half got persuaded to do it which I'm glad I got persuaded to do it because it was amazing but with this again telling the instructor that I have dyspraxia and just working and working and working at it and it did take me a little bit longer than the rest to conquer it but I did it so I think the key here is just believing in yourself and even if you struggle with coordination and it's not your strong point even the littlest of improvement just knowing that I didn't give up I gave it my full go and I'm improving that's the mentality that you've got to have as well as having your friends and family there for support because they're your biggest supporters and they're always going to be cheering you on on all the big and small achievements so this is going to be the end of today's video i really hope you enjoyed it and if you did i may be doing a part two in a couple of weeks so i'll see you in the next video please make sure to like subscribe and comment down below if you can think of anything else you want me to do in a video or if you've got any other ideas or suggestions that you might like i'll see you in the next video bye